We're wrapping up the 2022-23 Wilmington Symphony season with a performance of Dmitry Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony. I join many others in the view that this symphony is on the short list of the greatest symphonies of all time in the way that it appeals to both the head and the heart. Like symphonies since the days of Haydn, it is based on themes which are like characters in a drama. They hold the work together, but they also evolve and undergo transformation. Here's an example. A few minutes into the first movement, we hear a melody based on a simple rise and fall of two note patterns, high in the first violin section. Not too much later, it is heard again, but this time at a lower pitch and played in the darker colors of the violas, cellos, and basses. So the theme has already begun to evolve. In the central section of the movement, the orchestra gradually and inexorably builds into a wild frenzy, and we now hear what was originally a gentle theme, coarsely played at full volume by trombones and tuba. This time it is echoed by the upper brass instruments, forming an imitative canon. Once the violence subsides, the theme emerges one last time, this time serene again and for the first time in a major key. The examples of symphonic craftsmanship at the service of wide-ranging emotional expression are too numerous to cover here, but I would like to mention one aspect of the Fifth Symphony that is controversial to this day. Shostakovich composed at a time in the Soviet Union where artists were heavily controlled by the state, and even instrumental music without words was banned if it was deemed not appropriate in the judgment of Stalin. Shostakovich headed off trouble with the authorities by withdrawing his Fourth Symphony, before it was even publicly performed, and the fifth premiered with the composer humbly agreeing that it was a Soviet artist's response to fair criticism. The controversy came later in a memoir Shostakovich may or may not have written, saying that in the triumphant ending of the Fifth Symphony, the rejoicing is forced, created under threat, as if someone were beating you with a stick and saying, your business is rejoicing. This has affected performances of the symphony. Leonard Bernstein treats it as a grand and optimistic rush to the end. Much more recently, Mstislav Rostopovich, who knew Shostakovich, and said that the ending contained a hidden message conducted the same music in a much more mechanical and deliberate way. When I lead this work on Saturday, May 13th in the Wilson Center, I plan to steer a middle course during the final moments to allow you to hear the hidden message or just listen to it as a work of art. 
The concert also features guest artist Cabra Sane Charles in a performance of an exciting new concerto for double bass written by Argentinian composer Andres Martín. <laughs> 